Hey everyone, I'm Zueb Khan and I'm a front-end engineer. In this video, I'll show you how to add asynchronous validation to your Angular reactive forms. We'll build something like this, an email input field which shows up validations when the user focuses away from it. We want the email field to show errors when it is empty, when it is not in the correct format, and also when the email entered has already been registered, that is, it's not unique. For example, so for this last validation, we need to make a network call to check whether this email is already registered. So this is an asynchronous validation since we need to wait for the network call before we can inform the user about its validity. With that out of the way, let's get started and see exactly how to do this. So first we have our project and we add the Angular Material library to it using ng-add Angular Material. Once this is installed, we'll just include the modules we need in our app module. We'll need the form field module, the input module, and the progress spinner module. Since also we'll be using reactive forms, let's also include the reactive forms module. Great. Since in reactive forms, we keep our form control definition in the component file, let's do that now. We'll go in app component and define a new email control. This will be a new form control with an initial value of empty. The second parameter in the creation of a form control allows us to set our control options. This will have validators, referring to synchronous validators, and async validators. Let's first add the synchronous validators. We'll add the validators.required, meaning the field can't be empty, and validators.email, meaning the field has to have a valid email format. Now these validators were built-in validators, so we didn't need to define them first. For our async validator though, since it is a custom validator, we'll need to define it ourselves. First, we need a service so that we can perform the network call needed for this. Since we don't actually have an API, we are just going to build a dummy one right now. Let's create a new service with ng-generate service, services slash user. We'll go in our service now and let me copy in the function that we needed. So the email exists function here simulates a network call. It takes in our email value in our parameter and checks it against some hard-coded values. And if they match, it says the email exists. Otherwise, it says no, the email is unique. Of course, we also added a slight delay here of 500 milliseconds, so it behaves like an API call would. Great, so we have a service which you can use. Now we just need to define our custom async validator. Since our async validator has to use a service, it makes sense to keep it encapsulated in a service as well. So let's use the same user service to define our async validator function. We'll define a function called unique email validator and we'll have the return type of async validator function. This function is of the following format. The input will be of the abstract control that we are validating and the return type will be an observable containing either the validation errors or the null. Inside of it, we'll simply call the email exists function that we defined above. We will send in our control value, which will be our email value. And then we'll add a pipe to it and we'll add a map operator. We will get our exists value here and we will check if it exists. If it exists, that is if it is true, then we will return back an object with the key of email exists and the value of true. This is what is referred to as the validation error object. It simply contains the key and the value of the error. If the email does not exist, we'll just return null, which means there will be no validation error due to this. Simple enough, right? Just for completeness, we'll also add the cache error operator here so that we can return something when uh, there is an error from the API call. In our case, we'll return null here and consider the email to be unique. So now that we have our async validator function defined, let's add it to our form control definition. We 
we'll go back to our app component ts file and first we will add or we'll inject the user service in the constructor and then we will refer to it and just refer the unique email validator function here great all of this is set up now all we have to do is to create our control in the template file so let's quickly go there and add our email input we'll add a new mat form field with the appearance of fill we'll given appearance of fill then we'll add a mat label with email address next we'll add an input element inside of it and we'll give a mat input directive to it and we'll specify our form control directive inside of it we'll write form control and we'll specify email control inside of it this makes our input field operational however we still won't get any validation errors shown so let's add our error messages in the template for a mat form field we do this by adding a mat error inside of the form field we'll add one for the required error this will have the message that an email is required this should only show when the required validation is fired so we'll add an ngif directive which checks the email control dot errors object and its required key errors refers to the validation errors object returned from the validator similarly we'll copy this for the email format validation as well something like this and we'll have the message of please enter a valid email address lastly let's do it for our custom async validation as well where we'll check for the email exists key note this key is exactly the same that we are returning from our validator great so all of this is set up let's test this out with ng serve okay we also added some slight styling to it to make it look good so let's test this we'll test the empty okay it looks good an email is required is shown then let's test the incorrect format okay it says please enter a valid email address and thirdly let's test by entering an existing email consult@zebhan.com and yes we get our already registered message here finally let's try out a unique email and see if it gives an error let's do this is zoeb@gmail.com and yes so this doesn't give an error which means all validations pass so all this seems to work well but you will notice we have a slight delay when async validation is in progress but the user doesn't get any visual indication of the same which might lead him to think there is no error it turns out that a form control which has an asynchronous validation in progress provides a flag called pending so that we can display some visual indicator during that time in our case the mat input lets us add a suffix to our input let's add a material progress pinner here and we will mark it with mat suffix let's test it out now okay so it shows that some space has been taken but let's set its mode to indeterminate so that we can see something great but it's really big so let's reduce the diameter to 20 pixels great so this looks about right lastly we just add an ng if checking for the email control pending flag we'll check the email control dot pending so that it only shows up when the async validation is in progress great let's test this out now we'll write consult at zoepkhan.com and yes now the user knows when the control is waiting for some network call to validate and can wait as well nice one last issue we need to fix here is that the async validation starts calling our api as soon as all the synchronous validators are passed without waiting for us to complete typing in the email this is incorrect because it will cause lots of unnecessary api calls one way to fix this is to change the update on property for our control this property tells angular when to propagate the change and can be set to on change which is a default value and on blur which means the change events and validations will only fire when the user focuses out of the input text this will be a better fit for our async validation so we'll set this in our form control options we'll go in our app component.ts file again and we will set update on 
to blur. Let's test this out again. So let's write something and you can see now that the validation is only fired when we focus out of the text box. For example, let's test this. Yes, so we're getting the error only after we have typed in the whole thing. This ensures that we don't get multiple calls. So that's all there is to it. We added both synchronous and asynchronous validations to our email control field and we tested it out. We added also a few visual and other tweaks along the way. We can very well use this in a real world large form for our purposes. If you like this video, do consider subscribing to my channel for more. Thanks for watching.